This talk is on ICE syndrome, the irritable corneal endothelial syndrome, which is a rare family of diseases that share typical corneal endothelial findings and develop unilateral glaucoma. If you see bilateral glaucoma that you want to call ICE syndrome, you should really look for another etiology. The pathophysiology is that the endothelium takes on epithelial-like characteristics and grows as a membrane across the iridocorneal angle, leading to synechial angle closure. There is some polymerase chain reaction evidence of herpes virus in the corneas of ICE patients, leading some people to treat their ICE patients with systemic antiviral agents. This is something I haven't done. I haven't been compelled by the literature to do that. It is more common in women than men and typically develops in early middle age. So it can develop in people who are young, but usually people in their 30s, 40s, 50s. And half of those people will get glaucoma. Symptoms usually come from corneal decompensation but also they might notice the changes that occur in the iris, like the subtle peaking of the iris in the photograph here, or their ophthalmologist or optometrist might notice these changes. There are three forms of ICE syndrome, Chandler, essential iris atrophy, and kogan reese There's some overlap between these. They do share the findings of a beaten bronze corneal endothelium, as you can see here. And you can see in this great picture here, to orient us, this is a slit beam coming from the left. This is the width of the slit beam. This is the thickness of the cornea. And what we're seeing is this hammered silver beaten bronze look. You really see it to the side of the bright beam. The other thing that is very common and almost unique to these patients is that they develop synechia that extend far anterior to Schwalbe's line. So this is a synechia in somebody with ice. This is the anterior border of the trabecular meshwork. You can see that it comes way up on uh, to the cornea. And usually iris won't stick to the cornea unless there's a break in the endothelium from a paracentesis or something. So this is something that really separates the ice syndromes from other diseases that can cause synechia. In Chandler syndrome, the corneal changes predominate, especially the corneal edema, as can be seen in these two pictures. The abnormalities that are seen on specular microscopy as seen here are really seen in all forms of ice syndrome, but in Chandler's, the corneal abnormality causes edema that's often symptomatic. In essential iris atrophy, the iris changes predominate. The membrane that grows across the anterior segment causes corectopia, meaning the pupil is displaced, and polychoria, meaning that there are extra pupils. And you get a picture like this, with slit lamp view on the left, red reflex view on the right. And this is an interesting essential iris atrophy patient in that there are four separate holes in this iris. There's a pupil, of course, surgical iridectomy, a stretch hole, and a melt hole. And the kogan reese variant then, the membrane across the iris allows little tufts of normal iris tissue to poke through, and those look like nevi. And you can see those in this picture here quite easily. And in the picture on the right, again, you see this very tall synechia way up onto the cornea, and you get this speckled appearance um, from the kogan reese variant of ICE syndrome. Just a closer view of those little nubbins coming up through this uh, membrane on the iris. And one more, more extensive view here. We treat ICE syndrome in some ways, like neovascular glaucoma, it's extensive angle closure. We don't use the anti-VEGF drugs that one would use for uh, neovascular glaucoma, but we treat them, uh, the glaucoma part, the same.
cholinergics and trabeculoplasty really have no role here because the angle is no longer visible. Prostaglandin analogs probably are not very effective because the synechia that covers the trabecular meshwork also covers the anterior face of the ciliary body. Trabeculectomies can be problematic because they can become lined with corneal, with this abnormal endothelium. And tube shunts can become occluded by this membrane that grows across the anterior segment. The corneal changes that are seen in these patients might require penetrating keratoplasty. The course is typically progressive, uh, progressive iris changes, progressive peripheral anterior synechia. These are photos that are just a year apart in a patient who noticed a slight distortion of the pupil in 2012 and the next year uh, had rather striking changes and a tribute to our photo department that we have these photos that are 40 years apart uh, showing the changes that can occur uh, in ICE syndrome over time. The textbooks often show these very dramatic pictures of ICE syndrome, the oh my goodness look at this kind of cases, but early ICE is often subtle. This is a case from my partner Dr. Kwan this patient presented with subtle corectopia, also has a laser iridotomy on this right eye. And on gonioscopy, you can see this broad synechia that goes way up onto the corneal endothelium, very suggestive of ice. The iridotomy was done because this patient had narrow angles and a sort of a knee-jerk response to do an iridotomy with angle closure, but it's not pupillary block, so probably not a great idea. And you can see the normal eye has this excellent, beautiful pattern of endothelium, whereas the affected eye, the endothelium, looks markedly distorted and irregular. What about ICE syndrome versus Rieger? They, they really do look similar in some ways. They have these distorted uh, irises, the, sometimes the sphincter is very distinct because in ICE syndrome there's atrophy of the iris and in axenfeld rieger syndrome there's hypoplasia of the iris. But in a living human that you're looking at at a slit lamp, you should never struggle to make this diagnosis. ICE is unilateral, axenfeld rieger bilateral. ICE is sporadic, axenfeld rieger syndrome is dominant. ICE is acquired versus congenital. There's no embryotoxin in ice, but there is in axenfeld rieger syndrome. This hammered silver beaten bronze look of ice is not seen in axenfeld riegers You have an atrophic iris in ice, hypoplastic in Rieger syndrome, and ice has no systemic features where axenfeld rieger can have issues with flattened maxilla, unusual teeth, and umbilicus. So while in pictures and a test, they might look quite similar, and on the hoof, they look very different. So key points, unilateral glaucoma often in middle-aged women can be quite subtle early. Look for synechia that extend anterior to Schwalbe line. That's a really great way to pick up this disease. Specular microscopy can make the diagnosis if you're really on the fence. And these patients are really challenging to treat. So eye syndrome, very interesting disease or collection of diseases that is rare, but not so rare that you won't see them during your career.